Hey, math students. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit more about the composition of functions. And, um, well, got a couple of functions written right up here above my, uh, my head. One says f of x equals x squared minus 4. Another one says g of x equals the square root of x minus 1. And what I want to know is, what is f of g of x? Okay, well, that means I want to find f of g of x, right? And that's going to be f of, well, what happens when I perform the function f on something? I square it, and then I subtract 4. So this is going to be g of x squared minus 4, which is the square root of x minus 1 squared minus 4, right? And then I think we can all agree that this is just going to be x minus 1 minus 4, which is x minus 5. We all happy with that? For now. Well, let's see. Let's plug in some values. Okay, let's evaluate the function at, uh, for different values of x. Uh, let's say uh, f of g of uh, o3. Well, that's going to be... Um, that's going to be g of 3 squared minus 4. And g of 3 is square root of 3 minus 1. It's going to be the square root of 2 squared minus 4. And that equals uh, 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. Okay? So f of g of 3 equals negative 2. And sure enough, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. This all looks fine so far. Okay, what if we take f of g of 0? That's going to be g of 0 squared minus 4. And g of 0 is the square root of 0 minus what o oh, problem. 0 is not in the domain of g of x. So we can't evaluate that and then square it and then subtract 4. It doesn't exist. So this is a real problem. Okay? So apparently our function is going to equal x minus 5 but not for all x's. We have to restrict the domain here of our answer. And basically what we see is any restrictions on the domain of g of x are also going to be restrictions on the domain of f of g of x. Okay, so our actual answer would be f of g of x equals x minus 5 for all x that are greater than or equal than 1, okay? Or if you wanted to write that in uh, uh, interval notation, you'd say for all x from 1 to infinity, okay? But any x is smaller than that, well, f of g of x is not going to have any answer at all. It, do it doesn't exist because it's not in the domain, okay? And this is what I want to emphasize in this video is the domain of f of g of x is not always evident if you algebraically figure out what f of g of x is going to be, okay? You have to go back and you have to say, okay, any restrictions on the, the domain of g of x, and it's not always just g. It depends on which one is, uh, which one's in the inside here, okay? f of x, restrictions on its domain don't really apply. You would, you would see it down here in our final uh, equation. So you look at the final equation, and you take any restrictions on the domain there, and you also take restrictions on the domain of g of x. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the example of... Uh, we're going to say h of x equals 2 over x, and f of x equals... 1 over x minus 1. And I want to find what is f of h of x. Okay? So f of h of x, and remember that's the same thing as f of h of x. Okay? What does the f function do to things? It puts 1 over that thing minus 1. So this is going to be 1 over h of x minus 1. All right? And h of x is, of course, 2 over x. This is 1 over 
2 over x minus 1. Bleh. Uh, I hate seeing fractions inside of my fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this denominator right here, and I'm going to get a common denominator for it. So I'm going to say this is 1 over 2 over x minus x over x. I'm just renaming 1 x over x. Okay, and this is 1 over 2 minus x over x, combining my fractions. And 1 over a fraction is just the reciprocal of that fraction, so this is going to be x over 2 minus x. And I'd say, okay, great. What's the domain of this function? Well, the domain is going to be x cannot equal 2. I can see that right there, because if uh, x were 2, then uh, we'd have 0 in the denominator. But x can also not equal 0. Why? Because our inside function, h of x, has a domain of x not equal to 0. Look what we did through here. We, we did 1 over 2 over x minus 1. If x is 0, then this little guy right here would be undefined. And I don't know what 1 over undefined minus 1 is. I can't evaluate that. Okay? So we have to have both of these restrictions on the domain. So I would say this domain would be x goes from negative infinity to 0. Oop, not, nope, not square bracket, sorry. Parenthesis. Or zero, and uh, union 0 to 2, union 2 to infinity. Okay, oops, kind of infringing on the rights of that fraction there. Okay, that would be my domain. Okay, domains are kind of tricky, but I think you'll get this. All right, see y'all later.